Dave Patel's debut feature, Monkey Man, is now in cinemas. And boy, is it good. You guys are not ready for Monkey Man. Like, I saw the trailer and I thought I was ready for Monkey Man. And then I saw Monkey Man and I wasn't ready for Monkey Man. We're going to talk about all of the action sequences and what an accomplished work it is for a first-time director. But can I just say, for me, the cleverest part of Monkey Man And it has a lot more purpose than something like John Wick, mind you. Okay. It feels a lot more purposeful. The story, I mean, John Wick was very simplistic in its execution. Man is angry that his dog gets killed and he goes on a revenge binge. Now, Monkey Man is also a revenge thriller. But I think the reason it's so smart is the way Dave Patel kind of feeds in the metaphor. Mm. Like when you watch the trailer, you think, oh fine, yeah, maybe there's some brief reference to Hanuman and he's wearing a monkey man mask when he fights in the ring and so he is the monkey man. But actually, it's a lot deeper and a lot more subtle than that. Mm. And so before I get into that, though, just a very quick summary of what it's about. Dave Patel plays a nameless individual. I think in the credits, he's just referred to as the kid. Yep. And he is seeking revenge on the people that killed his mother, stole his land. Not just his land, but the land of poor Indian people. That's essentially it. However, the Hanuman metaphor and the Ramayana metaphor runs super deep throughout this film. And so the Monkey Man references are not in your face. But if you know the mythology that it's based on, it means so much more. Like the deep cuts are massive. So the movie starts with reference to the mythology of Hanuman and the story of Hanuman the monkey god. However, there are elements of the Ramayana that run throughout the story and it is used to reinforce his own parable, which kind of speaks to Modi nationalism and Indian politics of the day. Mm. Like, there is a point in the film when he meets a group of transgendered Indians, the Hijras, who are a race in India. Yep, yep. And what's interesting about the Hijras is that they feature prominently in the Ramayana as well. Okay. So the Hijras, or the third race, are actually quite important in Hinduism. Essentially, when Lord Rama was exiled from Ayodhya, his entire kingdom began to follow him into the forest, and he told his people... Men and women, please wipe your tears and go away. However, the people who stayed behind were neither men nor women. And these were the Hijra people. And they were loyal because they waited in the woods for 14 years until Rama returned. Right. And so that metaphor plays into what's happening in Monkey Man and Dave Patel. And I was just like, oh my God, this is all very smart and very cool. I'm just keeping quiet because I didn't know any of this. And I think it doesn't matter. You didn't need to know it for any of that to to work out, right? I Correct. think it's cool that all of that works in. And and now that you've mentioned all of this, we're going to have a conversation offline about how all of this works out because there are moments where Dev Patel's kid slash Bobby slash Monkey Man goes to the jungle where he is met with, met by, recuperated with the hijras. All of that works in and I, I like that. I like knowing that there's more to it than just a man goes on a boom, boom, boom rampage. Look, I like the first John Wick, but I think post the first John Wick, I kind of got bored with it. Whereas this gives me more of a reason. There's more of a reason for me to care about what's happening to kid. It gives me more of a reason to be curious about that really weird Shalto Copley underground tiger ring thing that he's got going. I like that. I like that there's more to this than just a revenge thing. And I think that's what makes for a great movie, right? Because Monkey Man works on the surface. As an action thriller, as a revenge thriller, it is beautifully shot. It is drenched in neon. It looks amazing. And if that's what you need, you get it. If all you want is just a better version of WWE, then sure, you have that here. But I think if you want more, if you want a little bit, I don't want to use the word mythology, but you want a story to sink your teeth into, right? You want a story where you can 
get worked up with the character, then yeah, dude, this is so good. I think the other thing that he does, which is quite interesting, because John Wick brings in a lot of Hollywood meets Hong Kong action tropes, East Asian action tropes. What Dave Patel does, which is quite different, is of course he brings in the Bollywood South Asian influences. And so you see that in the way the action is executed as well. What's interesting for me, and it's something I didn't notice until I watched this movie, was how bored I was getting with the hyper-choreographed nature of action movies since John Wick. Yeah. Like, after watching this movie, I was thinking about those action movies, and I was like, oh, wait, actually, it feels like everything is perfectly safe because everyone is following this beautiful balletic routine. And that's nice to look at, but there is a sweaty improvisational quality about what is happening in Monkey Man that is so fucking visceral. And you know what it is? It's that thing of where people copy people, right? So in the late 80s, early 90s, everybody was doing the Steven Seagal sort of fighting thing, right? Yeah, they're different styles, but shooting it is identical. Years later, then you've got the John Wick thing, right? John Wick comes out, everybody's like, holy shit! What is the genre they call it? Gun Fu? Gun Fu? Gun Fu? I'm just like, that's lame, but sure, go on. So then nobody comes out and everybody does a version of Gun Fu. And it's fine. It was cool at the time. But I feel like Monkey Man is going to kick off a new genre, a new thing. I think that was the biggest difference for me. As I was watching the action, you feel every punch. You're right. But I want to jump back a little because this feels a little more like like Ong Bak did when we first saw it. Like right. the raid did when we first saw it, right? That You know, I still remember that in the raid where the lead actor throws an unnamed henchman through the shards of a broken door in a door frame, right? It's, that, it's like, holy shit, I'd never seen someone do that before. And this movie has got a lot of that. You're right. The words visceral come to mind. The word gritty comes to mind. The word, like, I've got the Malay word. I'm not going to bore you guys with it. But it's it's not pretty, these fights. What's the Malay word? The Malay word is liat. I, I always have trouble trying to describe it because, random aside, it's how I describe the difference between rugby, the sport, and American football, the sport, right? American football is very explosive. It's a lot of contact, very short, very quick. But it's clean. But it's clean, right? It, it's a lot of big booms, but it's clean. Whereas rugby is liat. It's... It's tough. It's gritty. There's people pulling each other and it's not as explosive. And I feel like Monkey Man isn't explosive. Yeah. Which is not a bad thing. No, you're right. And the cinematographer, Sharon Mayer, does an incredible job because it's as if the camera is with you the whole time. And I don't mean it in a people trying to emulate Paul Greengrass's shaky cam style. This feels like a unique style. It feels like it was catered for this script because of the way Dave Patel is essentially the street urchin. So as you are watching him navigate the streets of this city, the camera is with you the whole time. As he's taking those punches, as he's giving those blows, the camera is with you the whole time. And it really creates this sense of immersion. So as I was watching it, my eyes were darting all over the screen in a good way because I was completely engaged with what was happening on screen like with yeah. a lot of action movies even with the last john wick because you know it was like seven and a half hours long sure after a while you kind of zone out from the action yeah. sequences Absolutely. right yeah because you're like yeah. this is going on for so long but this one has you engaged the whole time yeah that was my complaint with the most recent john wick right is that just move it along already. Like, okay, you fought the guys on the stairs. Really, did you have to fall down so you can do it all over again? It's not <laughs> funny. I got really annoyed at that movie. But I think what Monkey Man does is it breaks it up with really sort of interesting moments. Very early on, when we see a random, in air quotes, street urchin steal a woman's purse... And that sequence of the purse being stolen to it getting to the hands of the kid is beautiful. It's so fast-paced. It's It so typifies what you feel about the Indian street urchin life, right? That, yes, it's dirty, but it's also just, like, frenetic. A lot of that really worked. I think the way he 
breaks up these moments when the kid goes for his first attack and he makes his escape it suddenly changes from a closed room fight to a car chase sequence a little bit and that change of focus refreshes you sort of like wakes you back up again because at the heart of this movie there are only two major fight sequences and it's quite interesting because it feels like there's more but there isn't there's a lot of story in between and it's very good story yeah now that you've mentioned it but actually it's the bathroom scene and the car chase yeah. and then after that it takes a pause where dave patel becomes the monkey man you know you got to have that training stuff and then there is the final fight when he finally comes into his own and takes on the big bad guys he does it in an interesting way in that those bits in between it isn't just you know like in rocky like in the rocky films there's all these moments where rocky is just being human like waking up in the morning aching back drinking coffee talking to his girlfriend wife partner whatever here there's none of that right so even the story beats are built through fighting sequences so there are bits where at the beginning where he's in a in an underground fighting ring and and it comes up again later and then that training sequence like you said is in the is in the I want to call it in the jungle but in like a forgotten temple ruins type thing so all of that even though their story it's not a check my phone period of story it's very fitting that this is a monkey paw jordan peel production because it feels like his style of genre movie where there is a message buried inside all of that but at its core nope is an alien movie or yeah get out is a horror flick and monkey man is an action revenge thriller but Yeah. There is a message buried deep within it. After we saw the movie and after we did our review, I was looking to see what some of the negative reviews were saying because there were a handful of negative reviews. And it's interesting, everyone seemed to like the movie, but I think there was a review in the Telegraph that questioned whether this was a waste of Dave Patel's talents. And I'm not sure that guy was watching the right movie because I think this is an absolute showcase of Dave Patel's talents. I don't know why it would be a waste of Dave Patel's talents because writer, director, actor, producer, he pulled off something like this on a budget of 10 million dollars. Sorry, excuse me. Let me repeat that. Director, writer, actor, story by producer, main lead actor in an action movie with a budget of 10 million dollars. We make movies in Malaysia sometimes at half that budget that looks 20 times worse. Yeah. I don't know how that's possible, but it is. He shoots this in Indonesia on location. It looks amazing. The writing is so layered that it is in no way a waste of his talents. I think this is the absolute showcase. Now I'm just going to rag on that guy from the Telegraph, but like Why is he saying that it's a waste of talent? It's not like his talent's going to run out. <laughs> that too. Yeah. I don't no, understand. But it. my you problem I mean? was I think he looked at it as a John Wick in Mumbai slugfest, which I think is a very oh. easy, lazy, stupid comparison. I agree with you. I think it's stupid and it's lazy. And you know what it is? I feel like I want to go back to what you were talking about earlier with regards to Jordan Peele monkey paw thing. You're right. These films on the face of it can be seen as just a horror slash revenge thriller slash alien movie, right? But if you wanted to, if you had the faculties for it and I don't, you could probably write an academic thesis on them. Oh, of course you can. There is so much. And I think that's the point, right? You take away what you want. You want to you want just an action film? Go for it. You want to go in deeper? You can look at the racial injustices in india at the moment you can look at the racial injustices with regards to the third gender people in indonesia and then go further into other countries in the region but that's what separates a good director from a bad director right you can take monkey man and it could be a b movie if you take out all of those extraneous elements however in the hands of someone like dave patel who is clearly incredibly passionate about this story and the way he wanted to tell it 
it suddenly becomes something a lot more than a B movie. Can I just say, I would love to watch. Not saying there is. Don't quote me on this. I would love to watch a director's cut where there's more of the Hanuman stuff. As a guy who isn't well versed in those stories, I'd love to know. I don't know. I feel like you should just read Wikipedia because 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 I feel like adding more might detract from the the efficiency that Gonzo editing style that is going on in this film. You're right, which I love, and you're correct. Like I said, I'm not saying there is. I'm not saying there will be. What I'm saying is, I'd love to see Dave Patel tell more of that story. It costs ten million to make. If he makes a lot of money, there could be a Monkey Man too. I don't think I need one. I really, I really don't because I thought this was such a beautifully self-contained story, and it made its point really well. The message was there, and it did it, and it ended. Yeah. And oh shit, we haven't spoken about the music. The music is fucking great. The music is fucking amazing. I want the soundtrack. I'm waiting for that to get released. That was amazing. And so there is a lot in this film, and I think, yeah, I think it's just so accomplished. I was so impressed stepping out of the cinema. Yeah, I had one nitpick. It is a minor, minor nitpick. And go on. We mentioned it in our Instagram review, and my only nitpick is that it feels a bit like a kitchen sink movie because、mm. it feels like a director who's trying to put as much as possible into this film in case no one ever gives him another chance. Right. And so the movie is crammed with a lot of stuff, but I think the execution of that stuff is so good that I'm happy to overlook it. But I think in the hands of maybe someone more experienced, they may have left some stuff on the cutting room floor with regards to narrative and story, and I think streamlined the film a little more. But it's still an incredibly tight two hours. And it really is a minor, minor nitpick. But if I had one nitpick, that's what it would be. I like that it was a kitchen sink film. I like that I was being overwhelmed by everything. I like that I was overwhelmed by story, by music, by imagery, by action. Like my senses were up at eleven. I think I'd have enjoyed it slightly more if I wasn't fasting, because then I'd have sugar in me. I'd have, you know, I'd be like, ah, go watch it、I、again next、it. week. I thought it's getting watched again next week. Yeah, because I was fasting, I was a little sort of tired. It's early in the morning, so my energy levels were getting sapped pretty quickly. But like, I want to watch this hopped up on sugar like a seven-year-old. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> awesome. I want to be bouncing off the walls because this movie is going to make me bounce off the walls. Go watch Monkey Man in cinemas. Just be thankful it is in Malaysian cinemas. We didn't think we were going to get it. Minor censorship, language censorship. That was beautiful, right? I think all the f bombs went through. I think there were a couple of a holes didn't come through. But it's that Malaysian thing of, I can say, "fuck you" as an insult. I cannot say I'm going to fuck you up the ass as an insult. Correct, because that's sexual. For some reason, the sexual stuff doesn't get through. It's standard, fairly standard. I think it's the same in the U.S. Like you can use "fuck" as an insult, as an aggressive insult. You cannot use "fuck" as a sexual insult. Right. Only the sexual insults got cut. Charlotte Copley is saying "fuck" just pretty much every other word he's saying it, which was great, lovely. But all the violence is there. But even then, the violence never feels gratuitous. It's never over the top violence where it feels like LPF has to step in and go, "No, no, we have to cut that. Just there's just too much blood." Or I cannot have a child's head fly off a body. Go watch this movie. In cinemas now, you will not be disappointed. Let us know what you think once you've seen it. You know how to reach out, Goggler MY, all of our social media feeds. You can also email us on podcast at Goggler MY or send us a WhatsApp on the Goggler hotline zero one two five two four five two zero eight. Thank you so much for listening. This is the Goggler Podcast.